Happy Thursday, everybody. Nice to see you today. Hi, old Tabitha Johnson. Good to see you this morning. Tammy, nice to see you. Bright and early on a Thursday. Hi, Kip. Beautiful morning out. Plenty warm this morning. Plenty warm already. Hi, Kip. Nice to see all of you folks tuning in. We roll on. Hello, Jimmy. Finding it hard to move back into normal. That seems to be the question for the day. So how you how you doing out there? Is uh, Are you going to find that it's difficult getting back into what's called normal, whatever that is? That's going to be the question that uh, they've drawn up here this morning. Now, see, when these things go so fast, see, I lose part of them. So, uh, but good morning. I hear, I heard the bells. That's right. That means it's nine bucks, nine o'clock. On a Thursday, we are, hi, Randy. Good to see you this morning. We are on the downhill side from hump day. We are headed down from Wednesday to hump day. We are, we got it with people. You got to love a good Thursday. You got to love it. Hi, Annie. Good to see you. And, yep, nice to see you. Good to see all you folks. Beautiful morning in St. Joe, Missouri, like 78 degrees. Yep, 76 degrees. Morning, Vicki. Nice to see you. Good to see you, church family. Hope you're doing all right. For those of you who made it to uh, testimony and praise last night, I thought it was wonderful. I don't know how many was there. I would guess 150 to 200. And uh, we were spaced. As uh, I can see that that room will fill up quick because uh, it looked pretty full the way we had it spaced with every other row. So I want to encourage you that this Sunday when we do move back in, hi Ann, good to see you this morning. Uh, when we do move back in, uh, they are doing everything they can to uh, keep you safe. But it was a wonderful evening. Michael Dykus and his crew, I'm going to tell you, are anointed from the Lord. And uh, there, there are good things ahead for that young man. As the Lord has his uh, hand on his life, and you can see the anointing from the Lord. And uh, he's just letting the Lord lead. And uh, it was a good service night last night, young man. You let the Lord lead. And and that's what you do. Testimony last night from Mr. Taylor Hop, 28-year-old Taylor Hop. Nothing but respect for Taylor, for his mother, his grandparents. Terrific family, and uh, my, they've raised a they've raised a son and grandson. Because uh, what a testimony! Another thing, there's good things ahead for that young man. His life's about to turn. He's been through a number of things. And his faith is, is rock solid. And uh, he's working through it day by day. But uh, the Lord is about to just open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon that young man. I can see it coming. And there he is now. How you doing, Tay? I like that. Tay, nice to see you again. Nice job last night. So it was good to see Alyssa's mom and dad there. Terrific people. And uh, the Lord is uh, certainly working in their life. Certainly uh, strengthening them day by day, and her sister. That was uh, that was good to see. The question this morning is very simple: How difficult is it going to be for you to get back to normal in this world? Things are starting to open up, loosen up a little bit. You began to see some of that last night. It was really last night was almost a trial run for Sunday morning for everybody involved, and uh, and I think everyone has passed the test. I know the Lord passed the test. He was there, and uh, looking forward to that this Sunday morning. By the way, it happens to be Father's Day. Oh, you got to love good Father's Day. I think I proclaim once a month. One Sunday a month should be Father's Day. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? <laughs> good to see everybody this morning. We are in Matthew this morning, Matthew 11. If you want to get a jump on the crowd, uh, get tuned to Matthew 11. And we are in the New King James Version this morning. We're going to let a few more people climb on. We've got a question out there. How difficult do you foresee getting back to normal, so-called whatever normal is? Is this going to be a piece of cake like riding a bicycle? Did it once. I can always do it again. Is it going to take some time? Is it going to take some time to get back in there? Is it going to take you some time to get back on an airplane again? Is it going to take you some time to go to some events? Or uh, how do you see it playing out? I'm looking forward to your comments. So I will try to, to glance at those as they roll up here. Because we're going to give you just one more minute. If you don't have your coffee cup full, you need to get it full. By the way, mine's not full. Anybody around here with refills? 
Yep, yep, Taylor, good job. Absolutely good job. You can tell when people let the Lord speak through them, because that's when it's like, not only was this good, this was anointed. And uh, last night was anointed of the goodness of the Lord. A man that, uh, that was not afraid to say, I haven't worked through all of this yet. Uh, but it's, a, uh, it's an ongoing, and uh, I got to respect that. I got to respect that, rather than saying the Lord was faithful, being able to say, I'm working through it uh, as we move along. And I, uh, I respect that. I can work with that. I can get behind that, underneath that. So, uh, no more parking lot service this week. We're going back inside. We're going to bust the doors down and go back inside. And uh, so that's what's going on today and this week. I am going to speak with you again. A couple, about a month ago, I was in St. Louis. And I was eating uh, uh, locusts and wild honey. Remember that? On a Saturday night, we talked John the Baptist. Talked about him at length. I want to talk about John the Baptist just a bit again, almost adding on to, uh, to what we spoke about then. The scripture today is in Matthew 11, 16 through 19, once again in the New King James. I think Jesus, of course, he knows the hearts of men. He knows the hearts of men and women. He understands that. But I think he's at times dumbfounded at, uh, at people and the frustration that uh, say, you people are amazing. As much as God has done for you, and yet you still find time and find reasons to complain, as, as much as we've tried to make this obvious that I am from the Lord, that I am from God himself, and you just continue to re re reject it, and that's kind of where we are. He's talking about this generation, and he's saying, I can't understand you folks. I mean, I... It is baffling of the mind, is what he's saying. And this is where he starts in chapter 11, verse 16 through 19. And if you have a red version Bible, you will find that every word in here is in red. So I would say this is worth paying attention to. I don't know that I've ever heard this spoke about or talked about, but as I read this, I absolutely love the last verse of this. It says, that it all says this. But to what shall I liken this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their companions and saying, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We mourned to you, and you did not lament. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a wine-bibber a friend of tax collectors and sinners. And I love this. But wisdom is justified by her children. Wisdom is justified by her children. Now Jesus compared this generation to a lot of little children sitting in the marketplaces. And they couldn't be happy with anything. They didn't want to play with anything. They were tired. They didn't, nothing was, was good. Nothing was right. We're not doing it. Whatever you suggest, we're not doing it. He likened this generation to children in the marketplace. Yes. Everything someone said, they found fault and criticized. They, no matter what you wanted to do, they had a reason why we weren't doing this. We're not playing those games. These people were compared to like bullies. Bullies where a group of people would gather up against someone else that was maybe not quite like them, that was maybe just a little bit different. And they would make fun of them and uh, berate them and criticize them. Nothing is more hurtful, when you see it on television, of a group of kids that are bullying. Usually it's a group bullying one or two but it's usually a group gathered up on a minority of kids and bullying them. There's nothing more hurtful than that. To be made fun of because you're a little different. Or you don't quite come up to our standards. Sometimes with kids, it's more of survival. If we bully you and make fun of you, 
then others can't be making fun of us because they're laughing with us. So they do that so that, uh, so that they're not the one in that position. Now maybe you've been there before. Maybe you bullied other children. As, as you remember back, maybe at times we all have. And, uh, and it's with sorrow that I think of that now. Maybe you've been one that was used to being bullied, where others said you were different. And, uh, and you understand the hurt that goes with being bullied. He's likening them to children in the marketplace that made fun of others and that just never liked what was taking place. They just never cared for the way you did it because you just didn't do it right. Jesus continues to call these people children. Big babies, if you will. It's almost like, well, you big babies. You don't know what you want. You go from one extreme to the other. He said here, I love this in here, he's, it's almost like he goes from one extreme to the other. He says, we chose to play wedding. We were going to play wedding. So we had the flute. And you didn't want to dance. So we went all the way to the other end of the spectrum, and we chose to play the funeral dirge. Yeah, and you didn't want to do that either. It was almost like if we said, let's go to the right, you said, let's go to the left. If we said, let's go up, you said, no, I want to go down. If you said go, they would say, well, let's stop. So Jesus compared himself and John the Baptist to a generation. And I'd like to look at these two for just a moment. First, let's talk John the Baptist. Remember him? He would never fit into our contemporary Christian worship services today. He just wouldn't quite fit in. He didn't look like everyone else. His lifestyle was different than everyone else. He didn't quote beautiful passages of Scripture that the Jewish leaders would love. He had a weird diet. And in all honesty, he dressed funny. But the biblical record of John the Baptist was plain and simple. It assures us that he was a man. He was a man that was sent from God. We know that about John the Baptist. As different as he was, he walked closest to God. They said no one is closer to God than John the Baptist. And then... Of course, there's Jesus Christ, and what did he do? Well, he ate with sinners and tax collectors. And he didn't follow the rules and regulations of the spiritual leaders of that day. He didn't follow all that. Yeah, they made fun of him, and they called him a friend of sinners. What they didn't realize, what they were calling him, was a terrific compliment. And aren't you glad this morning that the Lord Jesus is exactly what they called him? A friend of sinners. Aren't you glad for that this morning? The last line says, Wisdom is justified by her children. What does he mean by that? Wisdom is proven right by its results, is what that means. Wisdom, played out in the end, is proven right by its results, by its fruit, by the fruit that it provides. Yep. You can criticize John the Baptist all you want, but look at the results. He led thousands of people into repentance, preparing the way for the Messiah. He was the front runner to the one who would change the world. And the Lord Jesus, you can criticize him all you want too, but look what he did. He taught, he worked, he loved, and he died like no one ever had. And in all honesty, the Lord Jesus absolutely changed the world. Amen. I would say this morning, the proof is in the pudding. That's what I call this devotion. The proof is in the pudding. Join me in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you for this morning. I thank you for this time together. And uh, we will find a sense of normalcy. And I pray for... Uh, that you would take us deeper into you. May that never be normal. May we go deeper into you than we ever have before. May we step one step closer into the deep end where we find that it's all right. It's all right. Father, I pray that you would use each one of us for your glory. I pray that uh, as a result of this pandemic, may we never be the same. 
May our eyes always be fixed upon you, remembering the days that you took us through, that we put our eggs in your vehicle, and you drove us safely through. We followed you through. No matter how different each one of us may be, no matter how much more like John the Baptist some of us may be, Lord, I pray that you would use us in a mighty way. I pray that you anoint each person within the sound of my voice. Anoint them for your service and provide the resources and the avenues and the place for we, each one of us to minister. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Good to be with you this Thursday morning. Tomorrow morning, Friday morning, I'll be with you again at 9 a.m. I'll just let that cat out of the bag. I'm going to be with you and finish the week, and uh, we'll see what happens for the weekend anchor. But it is good being with you. I'm really looking forward to Sunday morning. We're switching to the two services. So put that in your phones, 8 a.m., and 10.30 a.m., and uh, we're looking forward to a great time of worship in both. We're going to, to, uh, to worship the Lord together as a uh, congregation in one building, under one roof, in one room. It was terrific last night. It will be so again this week. God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you when we do.